What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a title called an Anku. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. An Anku? Could be either way, but this is a game where you are officially the Grim Reaper. Uh, you have been deployed to an area where the undead and like these spider kind of tyrannid monsters have completely overrun the landscape and it is your job to cull and reap souls for the big man. And this is going to be a game that has kind of like an interesting twist. So this game is nestled firmly somewhere in between. I don't even really know what to compare this game to in all honesty. Like it's definitely sort of a vampire survivors game, but like with an established open world that you work your way through. But like not really because it's not constantly spamming enemies at you and you're not constantly like wiping out the entire screen with casts. It's sort of like, I guess, Vampire Survivor's tangential while also kind of doing its own crafting survival thing in the field. So I'm going to do my best not to assign a genre to it, and you guys can kind of just, like, judge it how you see it. If after watching this you wanted to get an Anku for yourself, I've got a link for you down below in the description. You can find it there. This game is in early access right now from what I've seen. There are some placeholders. There are some areas where the content is missing. However, I do think that the idea is interesting, and if they properly capitalize on it over the course of an early access period, I think this could turn into something special in sort of like the Vampire Survivor's nebulous of games. So what are we doing right now? Well, we've been sent out to kind of like this haunted forest in order to collect souls for the Grim Reaper because for whatever reason the dead are out here and they are wandering the land. And that means we're not doing our job properly. And since we would like to remain employed in the afterlife, we're going to try to set this right. Now, the entire game revolves around you moving around a map looking for points of interest. Uh, so, for example, this is a point of interest right here. In general, you'll know when it's a point of interest because it'll be lit up uh, with either a blue or a red light most of the time. It'll have, like, a very soft lighting on it. I do think they could make the points of interest a pop a little bit more with, like, a floating white orb or something in the middle. That one wanted a sacrifice of five mushrooms, and now we get a boon. Uh, we can get various gear. We can get equipment. Our character has, like, boots and pants and like a chess piece they have a sword but we can also get things like amulets or we can get like spirits that will accompany us on our journey so for example we have a hand grenade spirit here that sounds freaking righteous so we're gonna go for it who doesn't love a good application of hand grenade in addition the stuff that I'm collecting off the ground can be used inside this menu right here you right click and it pauses the game and it'll open up a radial menu and you can say heal two of your health hearts real fast by using some of the mushrooms we just found or I could make some yeah that explosion animation is absolutely gorgeous wow very well done developer that's a really good looking explosion animation right there it's got the smallest amount of momentum to it when it explodes to sort of imply the directionality and, and sort of like the vector of the grenade but it's very very subtle in the way that the explosion leans to imply that velocity that's actually a really cool observation that they've managed to animate right there we got some salt, Peter. First thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get some equipment put together. So Chest of the Harasser right here. I just unlocked this. This game is a roguelite. It's got metagame progression. As of right now, there's two character classes in the game, and I think there's like 35 pieces of equipment for each character class that you don't start out with. You have to unlock them by doing achievements and stuff. But I just unlocked this guy right here, so I want to equip it. It should give me one more heart, and then all of these are upgradable too. That's the other thing you need to be aware of is that they come in multiple tiers. The highest I've gotten anything up to so far is tier 4. I don't know if it keeps going after that. There's no appearance change on your character. That's a little bit of a bummer. That's kind of one of those extra details I would have liked to have seen here. Uh, not necessarily for the boots and the pants or whatever, but it would have been cool that if he went with the heavy armor, he was wearing sort of like a, a Dragoon-style breastplate for the rest of the round. If you go for, like, the skirmisher's armor, he would like have a bunch of harnesses and stuff added on to imply that he's a grenadier. Uh, but it looks like we craft faster, we get 1 HP, and we can carry more objects with us. 
Not bad, not bad. Uh, we need fibers for those pants right there. But we can actually get the boots of the harasser right now, and they give us run speed. And I found that run speed in this game is actually kind of like paramount. You've got to have it, otherwise things go very, very oddly. Like, there, there are some enemies that have kind of like red rings that fill up for like an AoE, World of Warcraft style or like MMO raid style, and you got to get out of the way of them. And if you don't have enough movement speed, it can be kind of a pain in the old nutty loins to get out of the way in time. You're also gonna wanna have a lot of HP because mobs like this one right here will just casually deal damage to you when you're inside of range of them. And so being the soldier class, it's nice to have a little bit of soak that we can play around with so that we don't really need to worry about it. Your objective in the top left-hand corner, don't worry about it too much. That objective carries in between runs. You're effectively trying to complete the investigation and the ghost hunt for each character, and it's just gonna give you a series of quests. If you die, you will still be on the same quest step that you were the last time you came through. It's basically just like a guidepost to let you know what you should be working on. Also important in this game is you do have a block mechanism right here. You have a magic shield you can put up when enemies attack you. Oh, I've maxed out on my wood, very nice. We probably want to find another shrine, and I do have a tool that can aid me in that. And so as you can see, this is kind of like a bounty hunting, crafting, almost witcher style, top-down isometric vampire survivors, horde survival roguelite. I wouldn't call it a bullet heaven because there's not really a lot of bullets. Uh, what we can do here is we can click on this eyeball. What does that do, processing? A loom, I can weave threads, oh interesting, okay. Uh, well what I need right now is I need the spirit whistle. The spirit whistle is gonna make the wind blow uh, towards any shrines that might be in the area so that I can get more spirits and I can get more summons and I can get more equipment. So we're gonna kinda like move off in that, there's one right there. I don't know what sacrifice it wants but it's probably gonna want something. Wow, grenade spirit is really good. I've tried a lot of spirits, like a rifleman spirit, a swordsman spirit, a crossbow spirit. The grenade spirit seems to be the best one so far, so it needs an offering of two saltpeter, and we can get a crossbow spirit, or we can get a hand grenade spirit. We could also get a jacket of the backpacker, or we could get boots. I'm gonna take the crossbow spirit, because it'll give us a little bit of range. So now whenever I auto attack or I harvest something, a little crossbow guy will show up and start firing at the enemy. We can also upgrade these spirits. So throughout the game, you're gonna need a special resource called souls. You can see it drop off of that guy right there. There's two different types of souls. There's red ones and there's blue ones. Uh, the red ones are like special souls. Man, we got a big wave coming in right now, don't we? The blue ones are the normal souls. The red ones are like special souls that you only get for bosses that are used for like big evolutions of your gear to make them a lot better. Uh, the blue ones though, you're definitely gonna need those for like general purpose crafting. Grab a little bit of iron. Was that all there was? Oh, I maxed out on iron. Can I? Yeah, let's get boots of the harasser too. Looks good. I think I'm a little bit faster now. It's kind of hard to say. We'll go leggings of the harasser to get one more heart. Perfect. And then from there, we need to upgrade our sword. So there's sword level two. And then there's sword level three with the soul we just picked up. Uh, the damage increases on these weapons right here, very, very small. Like, very tiny. You're not going to feel the difference until you get like three or four upgrades in. And that's when you're going to be like, all right, now we're hitting the enemy. As far as other things we can do here, I can upgrade my crossbow spirit. But I think upgrading the hand grenade spirit might be the smarter play for right now. So there we go. Hand grenade spirit has gotten a little bit stronger. You can see a boss down here. We can look and see what the boss has going on. Oh, it's a it's just the little shotgun mob. Okay. Should be fine. Yep, just keep blocking it and just keep putting DPS on it. Don't go outside the ring though. If you accidentally go outside the ring while you're running around, uh, it's going to cancel out the boss fight and then you're going to have to like redo it. I need these guys to like gap close with me. Unfortunately, he's like hovering around the edge of the arena and that makes this kind of a pain. Yeah, so there's a chance here why I don't want to fight near the edge of the arena is there's like a chance I'll overswing and I'll end up going outside the arena and it'll cancel out the boss fight and I'd really prefer to kind of like avoid that. 
These guys right here are the primo targets that you're going over. They give you purple souls or red souls. Uh, those can be used for the really big upgrades once you're like X amount of levels in. Let me grab a little bit more iron over here because you don't really see iron nodes like this very often. There we go. A little bit of iron right there. What do I need? I need charcoal and I need souls for sword four. Uh, you can't get a crossbow, but it replaces your sword. You can only have one primary weapon. Uh, we can go level two chest of the harasser. I think that's probably a good idea right about now. So there's level two harasser. Go ahead and grab a little bit more iron off this node. It looks like we've got about 30 seconds of the threat not going up. So we've got a little bit of time to play with, to grab and to craft and to do things. There we go. Get those pants right there. Maxed out on iron. Is there anything I can do with these? I need more souls. And I need charcoal. I think I needed saltpeter for... Okay, so I just need charcoal. And I need a bunch of stuff. So we got flint over here. I'll grab some of that. I don't know where we're working towards next. I guess I could craft a whistle or something to find out. But we should definitely... There's some charcoal right there. So that'll help out. Let's go grab that. Okay. Charcoal grabbed. I do like that they included the little rust style critical hit marker, I guess, inside of your gathering. That way you can make it go faster. It's something active to do for something that's otherwise pretty mundane as part of the gameplay experience, like gathering stuff. Uh, we can get through the brambles later, I think. This path used to lead to the village, but the brambles have overgrown it. Yeah, I think I need like a stronger weapon or something. So I'm gonna need some souls. Let's go see if we can track down a graveyard. That's gonna be, there's a soul right there. I was gonna say, if we could find a graveyard or something, it would help out. I'm gonna heal myself too. Our hearts are looking a little bit scruffy right now. There's our soul. Very nice. I don't think I can use this. Oh, I can. All right. Yeah, dude, I will. Uh... Oh, I don't know. Charm of the Backpacker. Let's go Vesta. Let's go with the crossbow upgrade, I guess. How many times can I activate this thing? I had thought that these shrines could only be activated once. I guess I never tried. Very interesting stuff. Yeah, you guys are going to want to attack a little more aggressively. And as you can see, uh, my little crossbow spirit is now firing three arrows. If we upgrade him again, he'll fire five. A and they just keep getting better and better. A little bit more charcoal right here. Grab that. So what am I looking for now? I just need souls. I think... I think there's a graveyard up kind of like to this top left direction and there should be just souls laying around all over the place once we get to the graveyard. I gotta find it though. The game doesn't really have like a map so you gotta, oh I guess it kind of has a map. Yeah, I guess it does have a map. Never mind. I thought that was just okay. So we gotta go back this way but let me grab this soul first. I keep hitting right click to block. I don't know what I've been playing lately where right click is block. But I swear to God, I keep right-clicking to block. It's like muscle memory takes over, and it's space bar to block in this game. There's all the souls that we could ever want right here. There's also another boss we got to wipe out over here. Grab a soul. That gives us next sword. Block him. I love how it repulses the enemy. Like, when you block them, like, they actually fly backwards as though they've been rejected by some, like, magical force. It makes your block feel powerful and sturdy nice. Uh, that's unfortunately where the buck stops because I think that attacks and whatnot in this game have a generally wispy feel to them. Like they don't feel as heavy and they don't feel as chunky and they don't feel as gnarly as they could. And so hopefully they'll get a little bit more impact in on the hits as the game continues to develop. I need three souls for the next level of this. Alright. Well I'm just going to gather up as many souls as I can shove inside my backpack. I don't really much care about the quality of the soul. It can be a little bit scuffed. It can have a hair on it. I'm not that upset about it. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and fight the boss, I guess. This boss is moderately annoying because you kind of just have to, like, get in there and hit her because she's got, like, an AoE radius thing that just damages you. So just develop the HP to tank it, all right? The first time I fought that boss, I hadn't made any armor or anything, and I was like, this boss is stupid. Why am I losing? Uh, you're losing because that boss is literally just a tank check to make sure that you've upgraded your armor. If you've upgraded your armor and your weapons, you're going to smoke her pretty fast. Now we just need to track down a little bit of iron because I think we have, like, all the souls in the world. I don't recall if there was any iron around this area, but there is a sacrificial shrine down here. What? 
What's up with that drag mark right there? Is it just like the bugs are dragging things back to eat them? Can I harvest off of this? Oh, it looks like I can. I can harvest off the bug's body pile. Okay, cool. Didn't expect that. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll heal up real quick because I'm missing a couple hearts. I'd rather not be. And then there's another deer right there. Saltpeter on that side. I think I'm probably a little bit low on saltpeter. So let's go ahead and grab it. I think saltpeter is potassium nitrate in real life, right? That's what it is. Uh, we need fibers for that sacrifice. So let's go ahead and get the fibers together. I'm looking for iron down here anyways. So we might as well track down the fibers. And like I said, this is like a... So like that's what I mean is you can see the influences of vampire survivors in here. But it's not implicitly a vampire survivors game. Because you're not really putting out that many bullets. It's like a slower, more contemplative game. It's like somebody took vampire survivors and they thought to themselves like... What if vampire survivors and like the potion preparation and the bomb preparation and like the item preparation of the Witcher had a baby? And then they just kind of ran with that idea for a while. And honestly, I sort of dig it, partially because I think that I'm inherently sort of susceptible. I always like like demon and monster hunter stuff. I've always really liked the idea of this sort of like paid drifter that rolls into town and everybody like whispers in hushed tones because they're afraid of him. But like this is the guy that can get rid of the, you know, the griffin that's been eating all of your herds or whatever. And so he's kind of like a, an outcast, but at the same time, he's a necessary part of society. This game plays on that. Boots of the Infantry Man. I think I would just rather have level three grenade spirit, I think. From there, I think we killed that boss, we killed that boss, now we just gotta kill this boss, then we gotta kill that boss, I think. However, I'm not crazy sure if we're prepped for it yet. Like, the only way to know if you're prepped for a boss in this game is to kind of, like, send it and see what happens. Oh, cool. Crossbow Spirit's ready for an upgrade. I'm glad that I didn't pay for I'm glad I didn't use my, my random shrine for it then. Level 3 Harasser. Yeah, we should probably... Ow. Took a little bit of damage right there. Crafting efficiency did not help us. Sword-wise, gotta find some iron. Until I find some iron, there's not much that I can do moving forward. Harasser 3 right there. Yeah, we just need fibers and we need iron. Okay. Uh, I don't know exactly where I am right now. I need to find like a... I think this is the road that we're looking for. Yeah, it is. You can see the brambles up there. I am now orientated and I don't know if we're like ready for battle or not. I guess I could sort of fill up on mushy mushes. There we go. Mushy mushes filled up on. I don't know if I'm low on wood, but might as well grab a little bit while we're here. Never turn down a free soul. So say I. We fighting over here. Just you, big dog. All right. Let's do this thing. One thing I will say is that when the camera zooms out for these boss portions, it kind of zooms out a little too far for me to read attack animations. I got bad old man eyes. And so I would like it to stay like maybe 20% closer so that I can read the motion of the enemy a little bit better for the blocks and parries. But nonetheless, we churned through that guy, which makes me think maybe we're not too far off base uh, for taking on like another boss. Let me grab some more fibers here. There we go. More fibers gathered. Unfortunately, we have little projectile turds messing with us right now. So let me get rid of these little douche LaRouches and then we'll be okay. All right, another one bites the dust right there. Got another soul to play around with. It feels like it's been... This is odd. Like, I started this video actively. It says it's been 10 minutes and 37 seconds, but my recording says it's been about 20 minutes. Huh. Uh, level 4 crossbow spirit. Yeah, sounds beautiful. Crossbow spirit. I like the fact that we have ghostly little children just firing deadly weapons all around us. We couldn't get, like, adult spirits for this. Listen, the child spirits, we don't have to take those to the devil. We gotta put them to work, alright? Even in death, the children yearn for a work shift. They can't help it. Just put a rifle in their hand and just trust that they're gonna do the right thing, you know? Ugh, I still need iron, but I haven't seen any. Well, I didn't find an iron node, but I found a shrine. I guess I'll go ahead and take it. We'll go... 
a charm of escapism. Turn your special skill into a forward dash. Huh. Okay. Or level five crossbowman would work. More damage, a little bit more oomph, a little bit more pain and suffering directed towards the enemy. Can I afford to like make any new armors? I can actually. Okay, let's go Harasser 3, I guess. I don't know if like the differences between these armors are just, oh, we got an extra, I guess it's additive. So we just get another heart. Cool. Yeah, keep upgrading it then because I think we're gonna need to have a little bit of a stiffer chin on us. Although we are kind of like approaching the realm right now. We're kind of approaching the realm right now where we don't have a potion to fill up that health meter, nor can we carry enough mushrooms to get it done. So that's gonna, I guess we're getting carrying capacity increases with every single one, of, ooh, there's an iron. Uh, we get carrying capacity increases with every single one of those we craft. I don't know how like large the carrying capacity increase is, but there's sword five. Cool. I would like it if there was like little branches in the path too, like so like every other level you got to pick something cool that like your item did when you upgraded it or like choose a new affix that's randomly drawn from like a Diablo style list. Oof. That'd work. I think that'd do it. Yeah, our new sword's hitting pretty good right now. It's being a chunky, chunky boy. Let's go ahead and get a big potion in our system real fast and we'll see if we can take out that boss to the north. That soul over there is tempting, but I'm trying to get on the road and like get moving. As I was saying, it'd be kind of cool if like every five levels of an item, you get to pick a new affix or you got to like pick a new thing that the item does. Like level five sword, you could choose between, you know, it's shooting a fireball that hits the enemy and explodes, like a ball of lightning that bounces in between enemies like a ball of acid that like hits an enemy and then converts into a cone after it hits the enemy and splashes on everything behind it, putting like damage over time effects on them, that kind of stuff. Might be fun for playing around. And then from there, like at level 10 item, you know, you get to pick like an even further adaptation of like the acid or the fireball or whatever else. Oh, this guy's got like a, a spicy soul. Okay. I like that soul. I like that soul, let me get it. Let me let me, let me, me run that soul pocket. There we go, ran the soul pocket. Got ourselves a cursed soul too. Gotta find like another boss or something around here to kill. Unfortunately, I'm getting bogged down on all these nerds that wanna murder me. There's like so many of them spawning right now. I don't know when it's gonna end, but I'm definitely feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Luckily, my ghosts are holding off most of it so that I can harvest a little bit. But I'm guessing that's how most of your runs are going to end, is like it's just going to get to the point where there's so many enemies that you can't effectively harvest anymore. I do appreciate the fact that by opening the crafting menu, you can basically put the game on pause and like process stimuli and figure out where you're at. Dude, I don't even know where I am right now. I think we need to find the brambles. So there's brambles right there. They're running kind of at the angle that I expected. Let's just follow them down this way. We got another shrine over there too. I don't know if I want to go for it. If I just want to focus on like boss murdering. There's the boss ring. I finally found it, man. It took me a minute to find this guy. Prevail or die. Well, I don't plan on dying, brother, so. Oh, it's two of you now. Beautiful. That's gonna be super fun to deal with. Okay, well let's focus on getting one guy off the field of war right now. Like, we'll just beeline him for damage, and then we'll worry about this guy second because he's much less big of a threat. He locks down less space, and he's easier to chase down. He's got, like, a wispier jaw on account of not having one, and so I've completed my task. We've unlocked the Eye of the Beholder, so we completed the Quarry Arena in Kirkode. Complete the village area at Kirkode. And so apparently we unlocked Brachillion, whatever that means. Liberator of Kirkode on the soldier. Uh, we can unlock a new difficulty mode. That's good because that did seem a little bit easy. And so now we've got a new weapon as well, the Hardened Scythe. Uh, this is where you're going to go back out after you win the level. Uh, you can pick which of your Ankus you want to play as. I've got the Apothecary and the Soldier thus far. I don't actually think that I've touched on this guy at all. 
And then you could pick a darkness level. Oh, very nice. Okay, so there's like repeatable content here for replayability's sake. Nice, I mean, honestly, after taking a look at the game for a good 25 minutes here and then playing it for about 20 minutes before the video, I think they've got a solid idea. I think they lean into their gimmick, which is what I'm always telling these types of games to do, is that you are flat out not going to do vampire survivors better than vampire survivors two years on. You're just not going to do it. So if your, you know, horde arena style game does not have a gimmick, uh, get one. And if it does have a gimmick, don't use the gimmick as like a second string sales point of your game because Vampire Survivors is not going to do it as a primary sales point anymore. You're going to have to make the gimmick actually outshine the bullet hell portion of the game to get people hooked because this is just such an oversaturated genre. And so anyways, I, I dig it. I like it. I think they've got a good idea here. I think if they can get those extra touches, like every five levels, you get to evolve your weapon in an interesting way or add a Diablo style affix to it. I think that's all you know, ripe for the plucking right there for replayability's sake. Uh, movement feels good. Attacking could feel a little bit chunkier and a little bit heavier. But other than that, a solid first effort for an early access. I'll keep an eye on it. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were playing around with a game called An Anku. Tomorrow we'll be playing around with something else. Thank you for sharing the luxury of your time with me. That's all I've got for you. It's time for me to go.